here's our question and we're going to start with step one our step one is going to be to cover up the answer choices and i've actually already done that for you and and you can't see the answer choices so now we're going to move on to step two which is read the last sentence and here our last sentence says which of the following is the most likely diagnosis so now just moving straight into step three um how many steps would it take us to get through this question so this is a diagnosis question um we know we're looking for a diagnosis or you know just a disease state um, that's going to be just a one one step question or uh, yeah one step question so all we have to do is read this answer read this question and come up with an answer one step um it's not asking a mechanism of action not asking a treatment here um now we're going to move on to step four um which is to read the question itself remember we're going to try to read it slowly when you're first starting out especially um trying to you know highlight and make notes of important steps along the way um you can even do this by kind of asking yourself you know what do you think is important in this sentence what do you think this question is trying to ask me? Um, you know, what was the question writer trying to test when they were writing this question? Um, and that'll come back, kind of be some easy ways to quiz yourself on what's important within the question. So let's read this question. We have a 33 year old professional basketball player. Um, and he's brought to the emergency department because of intermittent excruciating pain um, in his right flank that radiates to his inner thigh and scrotum. The pain is accompanied by nausea and the patient notes that he's been having difficulty urinating and seeing blood in his urine. Physical exam elicits guarding to deep palpation, but no rebound pain. Vital signs are within normal limits. Urinalysis, urinalysis uh, reveals enveloped and dumbbell shaped crystals. Um, and the red blood cells are 20 per half hour field. Um, urinalysis is negative for leukocyte estrates, uh, nitrates, uh, ketones, and cast. Um, so now with that, we've moved, uh, read the question. Now we want to kind of, once again, read the last sentence again and think of some potential answer choices. So which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So if you could right now, just kind of think of some potential answer choices here. Um, you know, generate your differential diagnosis for this basketball player with some flank pain, um, some hematuria, um, some crystals in his urine, you know, kind of what would you be thinking of here? All right, so good job. So now we're gonna move on to step six, which is uncover those answer choices. We'll do that for you right here. All right, there they are. And now let's move to step seven, where we go from the last answer choice up, kind of evaluating each answer choice. So for E, we have nephrolithiasis. Um, in a kind of mentally way, do we think this is appropriate or inappropriate with our case presentation? Then we have D, where we have cystitis. Um, then we have C, we have biliary colic. Then we have um, B, I might have said B already if I missed, messed up there. Um, B, we have acute pyelonephritis. And then for A, we have acute appendicitis. So out of those answer choices, which ones do we think are correct or incorrect? And then why do we think those are correct or incorrect? Um, and we're going to give you a few more moments to kind of think about it, and then we're going to toss up a poll and let you vote. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open the poll. I want you guys uh, lock in your answers here. All right, the poll should be open. Go ahead and, and uh, uh, provide an answer as A, acute appendicitis, B, acute polynephritis, B, belly or colic, D, cystitis, E, uh, nephrolithiasis. So it's going to take a couple of seconds. All right, looks like we've got about 70% of you guys have answered. All right, excellent. Let me go ahead and close the poll. And uh, share the results. And as you can see, uh, most of you folks uh, chose E, nephrolithiasis, uh, but some of you did go for acute pyelonephritis. And so with that, I will hand it back to uh, Dan. All right, great job there. Um, we, most most folks got the right answer there, which is E, nephrolithiasis. Um, and uh, anyway, kind of moving on, if you'll just kind of advance the slide one more time. All right, so here's our question. So our question again is covering our you know 33 year old basketball player um, coming in with you know the intermittent flank pain, um, radiating his inner thigh and his scrotum. It's associated with some you know some nausea. Um, he's also got blood in his urine, and we have um, kind of some physical exam findings. You know, he's got some guarding, but no rebound tenderness. Um, vital signs are fairly normal. Your analysis is showing the um, hematuria and then some crystals. 
um, but otherwise negative for kind of signs and or signs of infection. So if we go through our answer choices, we have E, which is nephrolithiasis, and again, this is our correct answer. Um, and this kind of fits the patient presentation of the stem that we're giving here. You know, this is kind of that um, colicky pain is what they're trying to des describe there by that intermittent kind of waxing and waning pain that's radiating to his, uh, you know, kind of scrotum groin area. Um, remember, most of your time with nephrolithiasis, you're going to get kind of unilateral flank pain, and it is going to radiate down. Um, and the urinalysis is also giving us a good bit of information here, um, showing that he has no, no signs or symptoms or nothing to suggest an infection. Um, with the negative leukocyte esterase, nitrates, ketones, cast, those type of things, and just blood. So he's just got hematuria. Um, so if you have hematuria and flank pain um, and no fever, uh, you know, you're really looking at this is probably a kidney stone until, um, until proven otherwise. Um, another thing that's kind of important about our um, urinalysis is the crystals that they're giving us. Um, here we're seeing these dumbbell shaped and envelope shaped, envelope -shaped crystals. Um, and with that, do you happen to know which crystals these would be? Um, you know, there's your calcium phosphate, your calcium oxalate, your cysteine, your uric acid, um, those type of things. If you were kind of thinking about that, these are actually your calcium oxalate crystals. Um, these are most commonly seen in, um, in ethylene glycol ingestion. So, you know, your um, alcoholic that couldn't get a hold of alcohol and decided to drink, um, you know, antifreeze. Um, so uh, that's, that's usually the case scenario that they give you. Um, other scenarios that you can see is, you know, in primary hyperoxaluria, which is a genetic disorder, um, which might be what this, you know, 33-year-old, sounds like otherwise healthy um, basketball player might have. Um, you can also see this after gastric bypass, as well as in Crohn's disease. So um, those are some other causes of um, calcium oxalate stones, um, which once again cause the dumbbell or envelope-shaped uh, crystals, and that, that can show up on exams. Um, moving on to D, we have uh, cystitis. Um, so this is incorrect, um, and in cystitis, we kind of expect them to talk about dysuria and frequency and urgency and more suprapubic pain, not per se um, flank pain radiating to the groin. Um, this might be usually in a female. Um, you really wouldn't expect it too often in males. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but but you know, using kind of normal case presentations, it would probably be a female here. Um, also on um, your your analysis, you might see some hematuria, but you'd also see signs and symptoms of you know, or signs of an infection. Um, like increased white blood cells or pyuria, um, you might see leukocyte esterase or nitrates um, as well. Uh, moving on to biliary colic, um, this is also incorrect. Um, usually biliary colic is accompanied by a ton of other, you know, kind of clinical signs or features other than just maybe some epigastric pain. Remember, this is just a gallstone that's lodged in the gallbladder or, um, you know, the common bile duct there that's, that's causing some symptoms, especially when the gallbladder tries to contract, and, um, but, the, but otherwise it's not causing like acute cholecystitis or um, you know, ascending cholangitis, we're not getting any infectious signs or symptoms. So there's just kind of some waxing and waning, usually after a fatty meal, um, upper abdominal pain. Um, and that's that's not our, our kind of our case presentation here. Um, the second most chosen answer was acute polynephritis. And, and I, I think if I had to, um, if nephrolithiasis wasn't an answer choice, I think B would have been the next best answer. Um, but remember, we are looking for the best answer among the choices given. Um, and for polynephritis, we'd actually expect, you know, um, some flank pain with a fever. So if you see, you know, flank pain and fever, think um, pilo, which remember is that's just an infection of the kidney. Um, kind of like if you're reading an exam question, you hear fever and a murmur. Um, you, you really want to be thinking, you know, endocarditis. If you, think, if you see fever and a headache, um, you might want to think, be thinking encephalitis or meningitis. Um, you know, fever and suprapubic pain or, um, you know, you might want to think cystitis, kind of like our other, other answer choice up there. Um, but in this case, we just had um, no fever, but we had hematuria um, and flank pain, which once again, that's more, more consistent with nephrolithiasis, not um, acute pilo. Um, so once again, look for that fever and the flank pain. Um, also, you would see signs of infection on your UA, like pyuria, um, increased white blood cells, leukocyte esterase, um, nitrates, those type of things. For our last answer choice, we have A, acute appendicitis. Um, remember appendicitis, that's inflammation of the appendix. You know, it can be in a, a medical emergency. Um, they're going to have, you know, some um, signs and symptoms of, you know, peritoneal inflammation. So rebound tenderness would have been positive. Um, so you have pain on, you know, maybe some guarding as well as some rebound tenderness, which this patient didn't have. Um, as well as, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect any hematuria or anything like that. So um, some of the other stuff that they have. All right. Well, that will wrap up that question. So now.